Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we are joined by the illustrious, amazing, and the remarkable author, Tex Myers, and his latest book is DNA Science and the Jewish Bloodline. Tell us all about the background of the book, Tex. Fantastic, and I guess we're going to open with a very large can opener, another what I call Texas-style can of worms. <laughs> yes, it is, but you know, things are really becoming uh, more clear uh, on the scientific front uh, in terms of the Jews and the I- Israel. Uh, what I discovered and put in this book is something I, I had never really suspected. You know, Dr. Bill, you and I both get all kinds of... Tex, are you on a landline or on a cell phone? Because we're getting kind of choppiness. I don't know if it's a, a walk-around phone that's in their home or something, but it's going to like a choppy. It is a little choppy, yeah. I, I noticed one ago a couple of your messages came on clear, then the other ones came on choppy, so I don't think it's my phone, but would you like to call me back? or. Uh, well, we will in the next segment, but I can hear you well enough. You, di- you have good diction, so we'll continue. Uh, let's talk about the background because there's, a, there's some science behind this. Uh, and then, of course, it raises a number of issues, and it raises also how God deals with the, quote, the Jewish people, which, and, of course, the whole state of uh, Israel, which should be called Judah, uh, which I have stated repeatedly to uh, much people's chagrin that it was founded in unbelief like a fig tree without figs by a communist uh, Sabbatean Jewish state, which uh, God is going to redeem, and he's going to redeem not only the people who are of Jewish bloodline, it turns out that more of the Palestinians are actually of Hebrew bloodline than the so-called Jews, which I find not just humorous, almost kind of obscene. It's, uh, it's kind of pretty bad, isn't it? Well, it really is. You know, uh, over the years, both you and I have, have gotten all kind of literature from people, uh, saying that the uh, the Jews, those who call themselves, uh, are actually Khazars from the kingdom of Khazar, or Khazaria, that's really in the s- southern Russia and the Caucasus. Uh, and so uh, I-, I didn't know what to make of these things. I studied it. I read Dr. Uh, Arthur Kessler's book uh, way back in the 80s. It was published in 76. He, he was himself a, a Jew, uh, and uh, he, you know, uh, he approved by history that the Jews are actually pagans. Uh, now, not all the Jews, but uh, a great, great vast majority of them uh, are uh, pagans who converted to Judaism uh, in the uh, 8th century, uh, and then they left Khazaria. Khazaria was uh, defeated by Russia. Uh, that's part of uh, Russia today. Actually, it's Georgia, Chechnya, a number of countries, uh, the old Russian republics there. But the, the pagan peoples of Khazaria uh, immigrated to Eastern Europe, mostly to Poland, but also Lithuania, Romania, Hungary, and so forth. So basically, they were Khazarians. They, they've never been in Israel. They've never set one foot there. They're not the bloodline of Abraham. Uh, nor are, are they the, the seed of Abraham, which is, uh, you know, what Christian evangelicals use as the key. So what happened was in 1948, uh, these uh, mostly Poles uh, who called themselves Jews but were not, they immigrated to Israel. Uh, actually, it was Palestine at the time. They carved out a nation for themselves and began to brutalize the Palestinian people. Now, they said, we are the Jews. We, our bloodline goes all the way back to Abraham. But what, Dr. Bill, what if they are not? What if, you know, uh, they are hoaxers, liars? Uh, Dr. Kessler said this is the greatest hoax ever played. Uh, that's what he called it, the greatest hoax ever. Now, you know, the, the Zionists just, they can stand uh, uh, Dr. Kessler because his book was so thorough. But we, in 1968, uh, English scientist uh, Watson and Crick, as you know, came up with uh, the science for DNA. Now, everyone knows about DNA. You know, that, that, it's, that it's absolutely a science. It, it is irrefutable. Uh, and now we have one of the uh, top researchers in the world, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Eran Elhaik, who is himself a Jew, who was born in Israel, 
He spent seven years in the Israeli Defense Forces, uh, and he has come up with his research, which is irrefutable, which is published in a major journal, uh, Genome uh, Biology and Evolution, uh, and it, it, there it is for you. Now we have DNA science backing up the history books, and now we know that those who call themselves Jews, the Ashkenazis, are actually Khazars. Right. They're Khazars, and they have no relation uh, to the uh, uh, Israelites. They're, they're not Israelites. Yeah. When they got there to Israel in 1948, they had never been there before, unless they went on a visit or something. No, no, no we know the mixed multitude that it was in Egypt. Many of them were actually crossbred with the Egyptians and others. So that the Egyptian time and the uh, in as servants or slaves in Egypt, there were many that quote acquired Egyptian and other uh, Arab tribe blood. But yes. the real issue is not just uh, are they not genetically, but they're not spiritually. <laughs> their spiritual DNA is not Hebrew, because oh, the current. But but by and large, if you look at the state of Israel, the secular, Sabbatean, globalist rulers of Israel are not even remotely like the ancient Hebrews of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or the ancient prophets, or Yeshua, Yasha, who's the culmination of all the prophecies, uh, who was a Jew, and all the Hebrew Cohens that were, you know, the sons of Ephraim and Joseph, none of them have any relationship to either genetically or in their, called their spiritual DNA. In other words, you can forgive in the sense that the blood DNA if they became real Hebrews. Just like people can be Christian if they're from Mongolia, China, or Japan, and they're really in Jesus' eyes and in Yeshua's eyes, God doesn't a respecter of race. But the problem is we have a people that are neither genetically Hebrew nor spiritually Hebrew in their spiritual DNA. And that, that double whammy is right in the face of a situation where we have a nation that is literally the trigger, the detonator, for World War III. Now, now God's going to deal with Israel. He's going to deal also with America because I think America is an apostate nation. Our nation is full of apostasy. It is both the most wonderful and greatest nation on earth was founded on a constitution based on that our rights came from our creator and not from a government. And in the current institution, headed by a secular uh, agnostic, pseudo-Christian, pseudo-Muslim in Obama and his administration of progressive communist Satanists and high-level Masons, he's a 32nd degree Mason himself, we have a situation where uh, this amalgamation of these three major belief systems is the religion of the New World Order. And it's the same kind of religion that's running Israel. Israel is not a Hebrew nation. It's not a Jewish nation in the, in the terms that Jesus would call it. If he was here today, he would call you city of vipers, you uh, doers of evil, you who call yourselves Jews and are not. He would literally use the same words as in the New Testament, wouldn't he? Yes, he would. And it's interesting that in Matthew 23, Jesus told the Jews, he was speaking to the Jews at that time, uh, not only that they were vipers, their father, uh, their father was the devil, but he said, he, he gave a prophecy. He said, your house, that's the house of Israel, is left unto you desolate. Right. So it, it, is, it, it is desolate, and the Christians who try to put Humpty Dumpty back together again are simply putting Satan's synagogue uh, in in control uh, of that real estate. And I feel right. so sorry for the Palestinians. Now, the Palestinians were the people who stayed there all these hundreds of years, and it turns out that they have more, more uh, Israelite blood coursing through their veins than to these Khazars that came in. So well, what they did is they, spread, they changed their pottage, just like Esau, and they traded their heritage, which was genetically uh, ancient Hebrew, given the promise of Abraham, and took on to save their hides of their ancestors, to take on Islam, which is an abomination. That's uh, and that's why the majority, 83 to 87 yeah. percent of the Palestinians have got direct Hebrew blood, which is shocking.
welcome back. And um, so, Tex, I know we uh, kind of rattle people's cages. We don't want to just rattle them. We want to incinerate them. We don't want cages anymore. We want people to ask good questions, face the music, become a real Christian, which is one with grace, one with kindness, but also one with facing the honesty that uh, we've been believing lies. And much of the Christian church supports Israel no matter what the hell they do. Um, I tell people God's going to deal with Israel. He's going to redeem it. We need to stand by them in terms of being an ally, but we don't need to be uh, unwilling vassals where we don't even integrate our defenses or offensive forces so Israel can literally pull off anything and we're stuck holding the bag. It's really stupid and we don't see any improvement in policy from Obama or anybody else. In fact, maybe there's one little slight and there's a little resistance on the part of Obama because you can see he's getting a little pissed by being pulled around by a choke chain by Bibi Netanyahu, treating him like he's some kind of a dog. And uh, as much as Obama is a sock puppet for George Soros, I don't think he likes that. No, no that's true. But, you know, uh, Netanyahu came to the United States uh, and uh, they allowed him to speak to our combined Congress the Senate and the House, and they gave him, I don't know, 30-some-odd standing uh, applauses. It was incredible. It reminded me of a Stalinist uh, rally. Uh, And and they were just, I mean, they were going nuts for the guy. Or or Adolf Hitler. Heil Hitler. After every time to be Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler. Exactly. And he stood up in front of all of them and said to them that, you know, God gave us this land, uh, you know, was it 5,000 years ago? And I'm, right. I'm thinking, and now we have the DNA science. These people just look right in the face at you and say, We're, we, can, we, we trace our blood all the way back to Abraham. That's, that's a lie. Now we have yep. DNA science. You don't either. You've never even been in Israel before. Well, I think God it's, said to Moses, Moses repented. God said, I repent of making man. And he said, I wish to destroy them. And Moses intervened and said, well, strike my name from the book of life and uh, preserve Israel. And he says, I wish that I had repented of making man and I shall call up children of the stones of the earth. In other words, you don't even have to be human. He can literally turn the stones into people if you wanted to. But what God is basically saying is, these people, it doesn't, you know, it was one thing to be not genetically related, it's quite another to even be much more monstrous, to on top of that claim to have a territorial right to the land that's an unconditional covenant, when it's a conditional covenant that requires you not to just be genetically have heritage, because the Palestinians have lost, in a sense, their genetic heritage by taking on Islam, which is an antichrist religion, and then the Khazars that claim to have the bloodline descent don't have that either. The only ones that do are, quote, modern believers, whether they're Jews or Christians that believe in the Torah and not the Talmud and all the other satanic documents and don't believe in apostasy. The ones that hear and do the will of the Most High God, we have the blood right. I have, as a Christian, a Messianic Christian, I have the blood right to that land, and not those Khazarians that are Satanists or those Palestinians that even have genetics that say they're Hebrews, if they go back and do the genetics because they have given away their birthright for Islam. And so neither one of the groups has the right to be there, to be honest with you. Uh, what that land is given to is, is a conditional covenant by the Most High God to those who are believers. And he says the land will spew you out because you are not staying in that covenant. God did it numerous times to Israel and scattered them as Jezreel uh, all over the lands of the world and said they would be hated among all the nations because they'd stick together, they would, you know, scheme, and they would do evil inside every nation that they've gone to, and they'd follow pagan rites and evil scheming, and that's what's happened. That's why so many nations have had these pogroms against, uh, quote, Jews. It's not because they're necessarily just bad people. They're people who have been in the grip of Satanism going back for millennia. Well, that's true, and it's interesting that white supremacists uh, don't like uh, this DNA science uh, because they they want a race that they can hate. You know the true white supremacists. Yeah, uh, and, I, I don't yeah. Mean, and, and by the way, the, 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 it's a mixed a mixed multitude. Uh, if you actually look at the Hebrews, even the Hebrews in Palestine, they're quote Hebrew. Uh, they're a mixed race with Arabs of other tribes of North Africans from Ethiopia, of South Africans that are black, and all of them have Hebrew blood. Uh, the fact is that the least of those who have Hebrew blood are these Khazarians that came from the Khazars used to attack the Silk Trail coming from basically the Middle East through Lebanon and through Turkey to China 
and they would attack and repeatedly eventually all the tribes got together and said we got to get rid of these Khazarians they're such criminals they're like mobsters attacking as we go through the mountains of the South Caucasus and they did and they once they did the the Khazarians being clever decided well we'll just become Hebrews and become use this religion as our cover you know that's true and, and the Khazarians it's interesting that uh, what Kessler discovered in his book, 13th Tribe, way back in 1976, he discovered that the six-pointed star, the symbol, actually came from the Khazars. Right, and do you know what it stands for? It's the uh, it's a star that goes back to uh, the ancient human sacrifice called the Star of Ashtarte. It's not the Star of David. It's a star of human sacrifice on these, uh, these uh, spring feast days to actually bring forth a bountiful crop. So it's a star of human sacrifice. It's not a star of David or of Israel. Well, see, I, I believe that Rothschild knew this. It seems to me that the higher level Jews, I'm talking about that, that those that are members of the Illuminati, the, the Freemasons, uh, they have studied this for many, many years, uh, and they knew this was coming. They didn't know where it was going to come from. Uh, but now Henry Kissinger, uh, who is one of them and is now a Rothschild representative, shocked everybody because in, uh, last uh, September uh, you know on the, on the th- this was just about to come out uh, El Hike had already put out his you know tentative uh, findings on this DNA science uh, and it was going to be uh, outed then that the Jews were not uh, Israelites they're Khazars uh, they're really not even Jews they just have the, the religion like Sabbatean religion of Judaism with its Kabbalah and all of its horrible yeah, it has no it has no resemblance at all to the ancient writings of the prophets. In fact, they consider them inferior to the writings of their so-called rabbinical teachers, and they consider uh, Jesus Yeshua Hayasha as boiling in excrement eternally in the, in the, in Hades or Sheol. I mean, it's just obscene. And, and the Muslims consider Jesus Isa, which is another abomination, that he'll return as a Muslim to kill Jews and Christians if they won't convert to Islam. So both of these religions, including Khazarian, uh, Sabbatean Judaism, and Islam are both abominations. They are, and uh, what, what is amazing is that Henry Kissinger unexpectedly called uh, the New York Post and I think uh, Cindy, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know her name, but it's in my book. Uh, right. But uh, he, he talked to her. She has a column on page one of the New York Post. Uh, on September 17th, of 2012, Kissinger called her and said, I want you to write down, report something I'm going to say. I'm not going to tell you why I'm saying it. I just want it reported exactly as I say. As well, I say, yeah. Henry Kissinger, so what do you do? Uh, and then he said this, he said, Israel will not exist in 10 years. And, and, and now we, we have a Khazarian Jew saying that, you know why? Within 10 years they want to have a new order of the ages, a That's new right. world order. And uh, the, the transformation and the splitting of the seed of Israel is the detonator for this new world order. So the most important thing is not your uh, physical DNA, it's your spiritual DNA. And that happens as soon as you don't just believe on Yeshua HaMashiach, Yasha, which is the Father in the flesh, the incarnation of the Creator God of the universe. But it also means that you hear and do Shema, God's will, and you become a son or daughter of the Most High. Then your spirit DNA, which trumps everything. Uh, and so even people like the ancestors of the current Palestinians who literally tried to stay alive by doing an abomination by taking on Islam, their other ancestors died at the hands of the Islamic hordes at the scimitar uh, and the hordes of the so-called jihads. Uh, and of course, if we know that uh, Muhammad, and this is something that Obama, if he could get his way, would do, like the 57 nations in the United Nations are called for, anybody criticizing Islam or Muhammad would immediately be guilty of an international crime and be imprisoned. Now, if I made these statements in Canada, in the communist country of Canada, I would immediately be jailed. 
And people don't know that. If you're up in Canada and you're listening to this program, you need to take heed that the Canadian Radio and Television Commission would immediately grab me, zip tie, or shackle me and take me off to prison for multiple years. Just for making this truthful statement about these facts, you can't state the truth to a tyrannical nation like Canada because it is a communist country. If you want to call it socialist, that's just the external face. It is a, it is basically a country that's clearly under the boot of the queen and under the globalist control, and it has the face that looks like it's uh, similar to America, but in actual fact, you do not have free speech in Canada. No, you really don't. There's in the Commission on Civil Rights there. We don't have the equivalent here in America, but that commission can call any citizen up uh, and order them, <laughs> can fine them a big fine, and order them not to say, in fact, to close up their websites, close their radio shows down. Uh, I remember many years ago, uh, you know, I was, uh, uh, I, I received uh, information from uh, Canada, uh, and, and they were very upset because I was exposing the New Age movement at the time. Oh. Uh, and they said that uh, the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, uh, his organization had put in a complaint against me. Uh, saying, you know, I, I, I said that the Maharishi uh, and his people could not fly. He was teaching them how to fly. He said, I said, I don't think they're going to be able to fly. And they said, well, that's, uh, you know, you've singled out a group, uh, and that's discrimination. So uh, if I had gone to Canada then, I'd have, I'd have, you know, fit up before the commission because I said the Maharishi cannot fly. So this oh, is how no. many they are. Yeah, yeah, listen, uh, I've lived uh, there many years. I was born in Detroit, and I can tell you, uh, Canada, Canadians, by the way, do not believe this. But the Canadian government are firmly under the grip of a very satanic, evil empire, which is based in Britain. And you have to understand that these are people, what I call, of clay and iron. My other website is called Clay and Iron for a good reason. Clay is mm -hmm. human flesh developed and, and, and dwelt by transdimensional demonic entities. And they're not aliens because they've been here forever. Uh, they've done everything they can to not only integrate themselves, like in the book of Daniel, it says they shall combine themselves with the seed of men. And these are the overlords, the, the Baal, the rulers of our world. And that's when we see the Rothschilds, the Red Shields. When we see all these globalist organizations, the, uh, the Rothschilds, these clay and iron, human beings, uh, <coughs> avatar by these beings, they're the overlords that run our medical system. Our legal system, our churches, our churches are fully infiltrated by them, and it doesn't matter whether it's just Christian, Jewish, Hebrew, Baptist, Buddhist, even the atheists and communists, they think that they're run by a bunch of atheists. I'm sorry to tell you, I burst your bubble, your atheist and communist organizations are run by Satanists. Karl Marx was a Satanist, not a communist. He didn't believe that there was no God. His God was Satan. You know, I get letters all the time from people who are so upset at their pastors. Uh, received one this last week. <laughs> A wonderful Christian man. He said that his pastor unexpectedly in their family life center, uh, you know, where they, they had dinners and such at the church, right. uh, had, had had a, uh, in the tile, he had a, a mosaic picture made up of a, of a star. Right. Uh, and uh, he, he asked me what that was all about. Well, I could see, of course, uh, it, it was a satanic star, a five-pointed right. star. Uh, and so that, right? you know, I told him, and, and he came back just last week and said, well, guess what? This pastor was uh, accused and was found by the church of having a, a sexual affair uh, with a couple of the women of the church. So th right. this is, but, but evidently that inspired him. He was demonically possessed. He had sex with the women. He had this star uh, put on the floor so that all would have to go over that star in the Family Life Center. Uh, and, and so, you know, but no one really knew what he was up to. But I believe he was bringing a curse well, upon them. Well, I think if people have a relationship with God, they immediately should have a revulsion and a discernment. See, to me, uh, heaven starts today. Heaven starts when you can learn to hear God speaking, even including bad circumstances. Sometimes God's speaking to you when you get cancer. When mm -hmm. something happens horrible in your family, you lose your job. Sometimes God speaks to you in dreams and visions or a near miss like you were delayed because you did X, Y, Z and it was a massive plane crash or a car accident. God speaks to you in many ways, but you have to be ready to discern, read the scriptures and discern how God's speaking to you, dreams, visions, and sometimes verbally. He'll say, don't do, go here, turn right. 
And if you get that strong feeling and you know it's not evil, you better heed it. Uh, well, the problem great. is that people people should know that because God's going to direct you because he cares that's for right. us. And we're living in a sea of evil. And that's why I tell people the very scripture of Psalm 23 shouldn't be read at our funeral. It should be read when people are born. And Psalm 91.1 <laughs> my favorite scripture of the Bible should be read when people die well you know in my new book The NA Science and the Jewish Bloodline I, I show that uh, all of the leaders of Israel uh, without fail except actually for uh, Benjamin Netanyahu all of them have come from Poland all of them had other names they changed their names to sound more biblical uh, when in, they in, immigrated in to Israel so, Imagine in, in Hebrew. all of these yeah. people were Khazars, they were not Jews, they have fake names. Uh, every one of them came from Poland. Uh, in 1948, when Israel was born as a nation, in Tel Aviv, they, they operated out of a government building, which they called the Red House, the Red House, because they were all communist reds. Right, in fact, uh, and, uh, uh, Joe Slovo, who was one of the senior communists in the Russian Duma, was one of the founding members of the Knesset. People don't know this. They think that uh, that Israel was founded by godly people, and so no, 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 it was founded by communist Satanists and Sabbateans who participated in the Holocaust and actually made sure that there was no money paid uh, to bring the Jews out of Nazi Germany and save their hides. They wanted them to die to justify a Jewish state. And people don't want to hear this. In fact, if you say this in Europe, you go to jail. If you say it in Canada, you go to jail. That's right. But these these poles that went to Israel. Now, imagine we were, what, 65 years into Israel, and not one leader, not one prime minister has not come from Poland, except Netanyahu, who was born in Israel, but his father, uh, Ben Zion Netanyahu, was born in, in Poland. So there's this Polish connection. What is the Polish connection? That's where the Khazars immigrated to, uh, and they sat there, and from that vantage point from Poland and the neighboring countries, they sent Jews around the world, supposed Jews. Now right. when you look at Jews in the United States, you have to ask yourself, is this person not a Khazar? Uh, and it's, it's uh, you, you know, this is, a, you know, I saw Mike Huckabee, Governor Huck, Huckabee of Arkansas, on his program the other night, I turned it on, and he was just uh, making a statement. He, he was broadcasting, Dr. Bill, out right. of Israel. And there behind him was the Temple Mount and all that. And he said, here I am broadcasting out of Israel. He talked several moments about how great and wonderful and loving and kind, you know, Israel was. There are friends and all in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and right. He, he said, That's let me I tell mean, you something. That God yeah. has given the title of this land to the Jews. Oh, boy. And I, See, I thought, my yeah, goodness. Yeah. Uh -oh. I, I hope Start the Bible, then, right? I knew. <laughs> That's not true. It's not true at all. Yeah. They have no relationship to the land. And Dr. Elhai, who did this Khazarian study, uh, that's what he says. We And he, by the way, is a Khazarian Jew himself. Yeah, well, he's just telling the truth. He's a scientist. But he's a scientist. That's all, that's all he's interested in. Back in a moment. back and uh, text so we got some pretty amazing things going on here a lot of people are kind of blinking and thinking no this can't be uh, I think in the second term of Obama we're going to get this so-called peace treaty the Chrislam movement is gaining uh, a movement to try to put the, together the apostate Christian church with the with is with the satanic Islam the Sabbatean and Jews are running the state of Israel and we are having many Christian organizations including the one that you just mentioned <laughs> I don't even want to name his name. And these people on Fox News. Israel, no matter what they do, is okay. If they nuke people, if they start a third world war, if they close off the Strait of Hormuz, who cares if it causes financial Armageddon? Who cares if it triplicates a, a thermonuclear war? It doesn't make sense. And Israel basically doesn't even integrate its defenses or offensive attacks with our military. So the military generals must be having fits and seizures wondering what Israel's going to pull off next. You know, uh, from the time I was a, a young uh, captain in the Air Force, uh, I, I remember uh, senior officers complaining.
complaining about Israel. Now, I'm, I'm talking about this is what 1973, 74, right. uh, 40 years ago when I was in the Air Force, right. uh, and I didn't know anything at all about uh, Israel at the time, uh, you know, as, as you and I do now. But but I remember uh, generals are, are complaining about Israel. Uh, in, in fact, uh, in the latter stages of Vietnam, uh, my commanding officer, a uh, full colonel, complained about the fact that everything that came out of General Dynamics and Lockheed and such, all, you know, all, all of the, the good stuff, the electronic countermeasures and such, went to Israel first. You know, he, he said, we're getting airplanes shot down over North Vietnam. We need those electric countermeasures, but Israel gets them before the United States forces do. So in other words, we're spending billions of dollars developing these weapons, uh, and then Israel's Air Force, they were not fighting anybody. They were just sitting there in the Middle East. They got these weapons before our, uh, the United States uh, the military did. And it was our aircraft that was getting shot down because of it. Uh, and this, uh, you know, all of these officers were angry at what was going on. I, I remember particularly a, uh, a naval captain uh, that I talked with. And, boy, he was just so angry. Uh, and, you know, here we have the greatest military power on earth, uh, but we're being shortchanged as being given to Israel. How, how do they gain the power to do this? Uh, where do they, they get everything? Now, uh, I believe they've got most of our military men uh, blackmailed. We saw that with uh, uh, Petraeus, uh, that he was blackmailed. Uh, now, we, now we see what happened uh, to uh, Powell. Colin Powell was evidently having an affair, uh, and the NSA, the, the Israel gets the same stuff as the NSA does. Just, just like Bill uh, Clinton with uh, Monica these... Lewinsky, right? Yeah. Same thing. They, they Lewinsky them, is what I would now, say. General Colin Powell had to go along with uh, Bush and Cheney's a stupid and horrible uh, bombing and, and war in, in Iraq. Uh, he went, to, he went to the United Nations, embarrassed himself. He had to. He was being blackmailed because the man was having an affair at the time, uh, and he couldn't do anything but that. But this is the problem. All of our leaders are blackmailed. Now, if we had perfect leaders that didn't do these things, that would be great. But now we know Petraeus has his girlfriend under a desk doing whatever, and Colin Powell uh, is off uh, having an affair. Uh, it's it's an amazing the, the the horrible nature of our of our military forces. So no right. wonder these men want to be patriots, but they have a black stain uh, on their record, on their history. Uh, and Israel's Mossad finds it out. They use our NSA and such to find it out. They know every email that's being sent out. They know every phone call. Uh, and and they, they visit these men and say, we know about you, but we're not going to tell anybody as long as you go along with our Israel plans. That's right. what's and, happening. And by the way, it's not, not just for the little strip of Israel. They could care less if every Israeli, every Jew, every secular agnostic, every homosexual, every Palestinian, Arab, Christian, Russian dies. They could care less. People don't know this. They think they don't. They don't understand it. When they keep on talking about seven million, they want a blood sacrifice to their astral reptilian god. And what people don't understand is that this is their form of Zionism isn't to preserve the state of Israel; it's to burn it on a funeral pyre. It's to make it a sacrifice. That's what they're getting ready to do. Yes, yes, they are. That's that is that is so uh, important uh, a concept. You, you see, Israel has the Samson option. Right. Uh, they say they will go down in, in death, but they oh, will yeah. bring the whole world down with. That is the basically the official policy of Israel. Israel can nuke every city on Earth with its own forces. It can change. <clears throat> it has weapon systems that are up there with par with America. It is right now the second nuclear power, even ahead of Russia. Russia, basically, because of Glasnost and Perestroika, was internally bankrupted. And the only rising nuclear power is Japan. In fact, they just unveiled the largest aircraft carrier, the largest naval ship built since the Second World War, was unveiled while their economy is blowing out, and they now have borrowed 250% more than their GDP. People don't realize we're heading toward World War III, and we're in the economic phase now, and the state of Israel is being set up 
For as it says, and when that day happens, the blood will be up to the horses' bridles. That means there will be so much blood in Israel, it will literally, the horses will be up to their mouth in the, in the blood. Yes, and you know, Revelation 17, I, I believe definitely in mm-hmm. Bible, I know you do too, uh, right. it talks about the woman who rides the beast. Those are symbols. Right, and uh, woman is Europa, by the way. Europa is the woman, that's the uh, one that goes back to Zeus, how he became a beast and uh, and, and, and literally <laughs> raped Europa. That's why they call it Europe, which is the basis of the world currency. Our Federal Reserve is European. It's not American. Well, I'll tell you, our Federal Reserve is sure giving a lot of billions of dollars to European banks and corporations. Right. Uh, here again, we, th- there's nothing to stop it. <clears throat> no law that tells the... Uh, the Fed Reserve how to operate uh, so Bernanke who of course is Jewish does what he wants and uh, he's giving these billions of dollars right now let's, let's call him, uh, instead of calling them Jewish why don't we call them Sabbatai and Satanists just like Jesus would he wouldn't even call them Jews because well, he himself yeah. was a Jewish son of David he would call them vipers sons of Satan sons of Lucifer the dark one not the light one uh, you know, he would call them what they are, Sabbatean Satanists. I think they call them Jews. The actual Jew referred to a specific stone in the breastplate of righteousness that meant praiser. They're not praisers. These are destroyers. These are the, the harbinger of death. You know, Revelation 2 and Revelation 3, God reinforces it. Uh, but he says, he talks about them which say they are Jews. And they're and not. But are the synagogue of Satan? Right. I think that term there is good. Synagogue of Satan. That's they a good say one. They're Jews, so, but they're not. Right. Uh, and that's why when you hear know, uh, you mentioned uh, spiritual DNA, there is a spiritual DNA right. uh, of those who know Jesus Christ. These people do not know Him. They reject Him. They make up horrible stories about Him okay. uh, because they say, "Well, we're the we, you know, we're the true sons of Abraham." Uh, but, you, but Paul, you, the Apostle Paul, talked about the foolishness of genealogies. Right, exactly. In other words, it doesn't matter if you're Mongolian or Russian or Japanese, if your blood geology is not, quote, Hebrew, as soon as you become, quote, a believer in Yasha, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Father in the flesh, as soon as you hear and do God's will and become a son of God, you have the spirit DNA, you are an inheritor of the promise of Abraham. That is so true, and that's what I say in my book. You know, if you read the chat, the introduction, actually, uh, I, I say in there, this w- would be good news for the Khazars, for the Jews. Right. That, it that actually really should be good news for them to say, now that you know that you're not a genetic, have a genetic unconditional right to the land, you have a conditional right to the land when you hear and know the true Messiah, Yasha, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Father that came down as Emmanuel, God with us. Then exactly. you have a right to be in the land, and no other way. There's no other way to, to, to literally inherit and inhabit the land, and it's a conditional covenant that must be carried out forever. The Christian evangelicals who have mistakenly uh, bought into the lie uh, and believe that the Khazars are uh, genetically the Jews, now they've been proven wrong. It, right. it has to be embarrassing, but wait. I believe what they need to do is reach out to the Khazars and, and, and get them saved. Know, get them it, saved because it, if they get to know Yeshua, Jesus, if they get to know the Father in the flesh, guess what? They have a right to be there. there no less or more than the Palestinians if they repent of Islam and become believers and don't wear and bomb don't, vests. And don't brutally take the land. <laughs> right, well, exactly. It's been great being with you today, Dr. Bill. Yeah, amazing book. And how can they get it? The DNA Science and the Jewish Bloodline. How do they get a text? They can go to Amazon.com or TextMars.com, either one. T-E-X-E-M-A-R-R-S.com. Always amazing to have you on the program. And if you listen to the truth, and again, the truth will set you free. Check it with your Bible. Pray and receive. 